My name is Seti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at Zoom and how you can use it to have video meetings with your students when forced to teach online. Now let's dive into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now many schools are moving online and so Zoom is one of those platforms that is now being used more often. Many of us, however, have never used Zoom before. Now what is Zoom? Well, Zoom is video conferencing software that will allow you to have a meeting face-to-face -face with video and audio as well as a chat. Now the first thing you'll have to do is go to the Zoom website and download their application. Now you can see here I'm on their website and what I can do is I can click on that sign up it's free button. Now as soon as you click on that button the first thing you'll be asked for is an email address. Now one of the big benefits of many modern applications and websites is that we can just click on sign in with Google. So I'm going to use that button and then it's automatically going to register that account for me. Now I do have to click on create an account because I have to create an account with Zoom as well as having my own account. Here I am now inside Zoom. Now you can see a couple of things straight away. Now at the top we have a couple of menu options so we can schedule a meeting, we can join a meeting or we can host a meeting. Now hosting a meeting that's what we'll be looking at today and I'm going to show you in a minute what that looks like. Now we can also have an overview of all our upcoming meetings, our previous meetings and we have a number of templates we can use. Now the upcoming meetings these will be pulled in whenever you are scheduling a meeting. This is great for when you have multiple classes and they're all happening at set times well you can go ahead and schedule them ahead of time and then they'll appear right there. So now let's go ahead and host our first online meeting. I'm going to click on host a meeting and what we're going to do is we're going to host a meeting with the video on. Now that way you'll see what it would be like if I was presenting a meeting with other students in that meeting room. Now you can see it's downloading the application needed and then you can install that. They also have a Chrome extension so if you are using Chrome then you would have to install that Chrome extension. The application is being installed and then as soon as everything's installed it's going to open up that application for me. And there we go we now have access to everything. We just have to give it permission to access our video and audio so I'm going to join with computer audio. There we go. And we are now using the computer audio. Now you can see this is my camera view and on the computer you can see the webcam view. This is what the students or the other members of the meeting will see when using Zoom. Now the first thing we're going to do is look at some options within Zoom. So let's go full screen. Now I'm going to hover over this and then I'm going to click on enter full screen. And here we are. We are now in full screen view and as you can see the webcam is being used for the Zoom conferencing and then I'm using the camera to explain everything that happens on on my screen. Now a meeting is not a meeting unless we have more people present so we're going to add some participants. Now in order to do that go to the bottom and invite people. Now you can see we have three default options we have email, gmail and yahoo mail but we can also invite people by sharing a url with them. In order for us to do that we're going to go to the bottom here and click on copy url. That invitation URL can now be shared with anyone. You can use any messaging platform or any email client. Don't forget to share the meeting password with them because without that password, they will not be able to join your meeting. This makes Zoom an incredibly secure platform and you can really control who joins your meetings and who doesn't. This, however, does not stop them from forwarding the URL and password but once they're in there, you have some additional controls that you can use. Now we're going to close this box and I'm going to show you some other options. Now when you go to manage participants, what you'll see is you'll see everyone present in that meeting room. Now one of the great things about this is that you can mute them and you can also turn off their cameras. So let's say that something happens and you really have to explain it. Well, what you can do is you can either manually mute them up here or you scroll down and you simply mute everyone. Now muting everyone means that you can give your explanations and there are no distractions there. When you click on that more button you will see that there are a number of additional features that I find super helpful especially that first one because this mutes participants on entry. So as soon as they enter your meeting room even when they've forgotten to turn their mic off 
they will still be muted. And so you can just carry on and then ask them a question and unmute them manually. This makes a huge difference in large groups, especially when you've got classes with, let's say, 15 students plus, where you don't want them to just enter with a microphone turned on. And just having this option makes a huge difference in how you can run your online classes. You can also allow them or disallow them to unmute themselves. And sometimes, with, especially with younger students, you might want to untick this and then you have to manually unmute them. And then we can obviously add some sound effects or lock the meeting. We're going to close this right now. And then I'm going to show you the screen sharing options. Now I can either share my entire screen or I can choose which application I share. So when I click on share screen, you can see here, I can choose any of these screens that are currently open and I can choose which one I want to share with my students. I can also go to the advanced options and then this allows me to share just a small portion of the screen or the sound only. And then we also have some files where I can now go into my Google Drive and I can just share a file with them. Now I'm going to go to basic and I'm not going to share my screen as such, but I'm going to open up a whiteboard. And that's just so I can do some scribbling and explain something as we are having this online meeting. Now this is a function that many of the other platforms do not have. So when I select whiteboard, there we go, I'm going to share that. And now everyone sees my shared whiteboard. They also still see me in that top right corner. That means I can start drawing and I can start explaining things. I can add text, I can add stamps, spotlights, anything I want for my online lesson. And this is what sets Zoom apart from many of the other platforms. Because you have this whiteboard, it is an amazing platform for online teaching and it allows you to quickly scribble something or quickly explain something to your students while they're still in that meeting. Then once you've done that, simply go to the top, click on stop share, and your meeting is still going on. So you haven't lost all your participants, they haven't gone anywhere. You've just closed down your whiteboard. You can then carry on and again, maybe share an application. Give a little bit of explanation and then open up that whiteboard again. All these little features make Zoom a powerful platform for online teaching. Then we also have our chat and this chat is just an ongoing group chat. So. Let's say that you have everyone muted and you are giving an explanation. Well, you can still check that chat and make sure that everyone knows what's going on. If they have any questions, maybe tell them to drop that question in the chat. Now, one feature of Zoom that I really like is that you can also send a private message to anyone who's in your chat. So let's say that you have a group of 20 children and one asks a question. Well, you can either answer it to everyone or you can select that one participant and then just send a direct message to them. You can also send them a file or some additional options here. So you can see that participants can chat and then you can choose who they can chat with. So if you're happy to have an open chat, by all means, leave it open. But you can also say that they can only chat with you, with the host. In other words, the other participants don't see their messages. For younger year groups, this might be a good way of keeping them on task without having them distract each other with all sorts of emojis and text that appears in the chat. And then two more buttons on our main Zoom screen. Those are the record button and the reactions. Now on the record button, we are now recording. And as you can see, as soon as I click it, this meeting is now being recorded. And everything that happens in this meeting will be stored as a video file. As soon as I'm done, I can click on stop in the top left corner. And there we go, I have my video file. It is being converted to an MP4 file and then I can upload that to any video platform I choose. I can also leave some reactions. So I can just quickly give it a thumbs up and then they just see a little visual there in the top left corner and this makes it more interactive and students love seeing this feature. So when they're all talking to each other and maybe bouncing ideas off of each other, well, you can leave little reactions there and it'll just re-engage them into your lesson. And then when you're ready to end your meeting using Zoom, you simply go to the bottom right corner and you click on end meeting. So you can end the meeting for everyone or you can just leave that meeting. Now, when you leave the meeting, all your participants can carry on and just have a chat with each other or you can end it for everyone and they will be forced out of your meeting room. So let's go ahead and click on end meeting for all. There we go. It converts that meeting recording and now I can choose what to do with that. I can put it in a folder or I can put it somewhere and then upload it later. 
For now, I'm going to cancel this because I don't want to keep that file. And there you go, a very basic overview of how you can use Zoom for live video conferencing, for meetings and to get your classroom together, working on a project and just carry on with your everyday teaching. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, make sure you scroll into that comment section. Let me know how you are using Zoom and what are some of your favorite functions within the Zoom platform. What are some things that you find challenging and what would be your tips for other educators looking to use Zoom as a platform for online meetings. And now once you've left your comments, on the way back up, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching and enjoy your online teaching journey.